All right. Hello. Hello, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. All okay. right, so let's get directly into it. Okay, go ahead. We are listening. Okay, so first of all, I would be very uh, glad about the victory. You hung up the other day when you quoted Surah Shara. <laughs> you had victory? You hung up. Okay, you ran so, away. Okay, hold on. So why don't you download the video and post it in your channel? You never let me finish. No, 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 hold on, stupid, stupid. Just, you see, as long as it's a victory, I challenge you to download the whole video, put it in your channel, as long as it's a victory. Mm -hmm. So you see how stupid you are? If it's a victory... And now you... Oh, just, 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 no, potato, potato. I challenge you, I wanted to swear by Allah, that you will take the video, the video is still there, you go and you download it, and you put it in your channel, and you call it victory against Christian Prince. I challenge you. But you will mm -hmm. never do that, because you're ashamed of yourself. So you are a liar. You are laughing at yourself. You claim victory, but you don't want to publish the victory you just did. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, don't don't name me, don't hit me. I want you to promise me now, in front of everybody, that you are going to publish it in your channel, and not only that, you publish it on all Abdul channels. Because mm. aren't you proud about it? Obviously, you are not. You are a potato. Don't you want I an hang, answer? Abdul, I hang up on you because I washed the, the floor with you. You became like a ministry, the, 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 the demonstration rag, which Muhammad, he used to clean himself with it when he take a shower. So you are used and abused and I throw you away when I'm done. So if you go and watch it, you want me to play it for you again? We will die laughing. You admitted that you're a prophet is a bad person. You admitted, I never said that. No, okay. What do you mean you never said that? I never, those what, words never what, came what, out my what mouth. Was, what was the topic? Remind me. Uh, Surah Ashura, chapter 42, verse 52. Okay, what what we say? You, you were speaking a bunch of nonsense because you don't understand. When I try to answer you, you hung up. Okay, what are you, what we are saying? Remind me. Go ahead. Okay. Can you post the verse again? No problem. Okay. Thank you. And... Don't hang up this time because people will laugh at you now. No problem, go ahead. Again, if you are a person who claims to be having victory, be a man and publish the video, it's there. Yeah, I don't need to publish it. No, you need to publish it because it's a victory for Allah. Aren't you, are you ashamed of a victory you made for Allah? Here we go. Mm, Farid, Farid published a lot. <laughs> uh, he, 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 he don't dare to call me too. Oh, you are the same. You are better than him actually. You, you, you dare to call me. That girl, she don't dare. I do call you. No, you dare. So I'm saying you are better than him. You have, you know, you have a, you know, you are better than him. That's what I'm saying. But still, you are better than him. But still, you are more stupid than him. Okay. You are better well, than we'll him post because the you verse and we'll see who's stupid. Okay, let's see. You, you said the chapter of Asharh? Uh... 4252. Oh, a shower. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Uh, read it for us. You posted something else. Oh, no problem. Just read it. Don't you know the Quran? I thought the Muslims recite the Quran by heart. Yeah, but I would uh, obviously, but I would like the audience to see. Oh, uh, okay. That's good. That's a good, th good thing. All right. Read it for us. Hold on. It's loading. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Okay. We are waiting. You're on verse 48. There you go. Okay. So, and thus... Have we, by our command, sent inspiration to thee, though knewest not before what was revelation? Hmm. Obviously, not before what was revelation, because the Quran wasn't revealed. So how would he know what it is when it wasn't revealed? Hmm. That answers the first part. And what was faith? Meaning the Quran, because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wasn't a prophet. Uh -huh. He wasn't a prophet until the Quran was revealed. You okay. know that. He was a prophet at the age of 40. That's deep, okay. So before 40, okay. what he was, before 40, what he was a believer in what? He, 
he 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 was a Muslim. He believed in Allah, but he didn't have the faith as when the Quran. Okay, came. hold on, guys. He was a Muslim. Did you hear that? He was a Muslim and because he believed in one God. Okay. But does it say? Does it say that he did not know what was faith? Meaning, like, 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 as when the Quran came. What as in the, the understanding? Came. Hold on. No, no, he did not have faith. Nor he have faith, nor he have revelation. He know nothing about revelation. So if he's a believer in Allah, it's mean he received some revelation from somebody else, from a prophet before him. Like for me, I did not receive revelation, but still I know what revelation is. Because there's a prophet who taught me what is revelation. So you're a prophet in the Quran confirmed that he did not know nothing, zero about any revelation not his revelation it doesn't say quran it says he did not know what is what was revelation was was and he nor he have any faith so you're a prophet you have two things together zero revelation that's mean he never heard of abraham revelation he never heard of moses revelation he never heard of jesus revelation he have no idea in the top of that he is a pagan he have no faith answer go ahead Okay, in order to, since you don't believe in what I'm saying, because you clearly say I'm dishonest, and you always go to tafsir with other Muslims, let's go to the tafsir and you understand what Ibn Abbas says, okay. and he will destroy your okay. argument. Okay, I want I want you to tell me, do you accept Ibn Abbas? Obviously I do, I okay. never said I don't. So do you swear by Allah, that whatever I show you from Ibn Abbas, you will not say no? Go to tafsir.com, yes. No, don't, don't, no, swear. I want you to swear. Whatever you show me from Ibn Abbas, I will accept. You're not Muslim. What? What does have to do You're with not you? Muslim. What? You are not a Muslim. What does have to do? I'm asking you to swear by Allah, not by my shoes. Okay, well, you don't believe in Allah anyway, so go to you the verse. Be you believe in Allah, you donkey, don't you? I do, yes. Okay, so go swear by tafsir. Allah. Swear by Allah, because in a second you will change your mind. You will say, I don't accept. I read it before I told you. Uh, I know, I, because you read it before you told me. This is why you're asking me to show it to you, but I'm asking you. Can you swear by Allah that whatever Ibn Abbas, he say you accept? Are you going to go there or make things so longer? We'll go there. Why you don't go. Why you don't want to swear by uh, that Ibn Abbas is the one to guide you to Islam? Go to the tough seat. Potato, why you don't want to swear that whatever Ibn Abbas, he says he, you accept? I told you I accept it, so go. Okay, so whatever he say, not only about this verse, correct? About this verse, we're ah, talking about this specific topic. Ibn Abbas is a donkey when he speak about different verse. He is no, no, smart no. only about this verse. You see how stupid because, you are? No, look, you see look, the hypocrisy? Listen, no, listen, no, listen, no listen, I'm not Abdul, saying that. Abdul Potato, I'm, you, are I'm not saying you are a hypocrite that. like you're a prophet because either, I'm not Ibn, saying that. either Ibn Abbas is a qualified person to explain the Quran or he is not. So when you yeah. say to me only this verse, that means Ibn Abbas he was doing poo poo all over the Quran. I didn't, I didn't say it that way. Okay, you're, so you're, you're not said, getting the so, No, I, I, you said it that you, you said only this verse. Can you listen for one second? I'm listening. Do you accept Ibn right. Abbas explaining all the Quran or only this verse? No, everything. You accept everything you say. I do accept everything he says, but before you okay, continue, hold on. No, before no, no, you no, continue, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because you accept whatever Ibn Abbas he says, we need to examine what Ibn Abbas he says. Can we do that? Can I say something before you? You go? can say no. Why you don't want Ibn okay. Abbas? Why you don't want Ibn Abbas? What the problem? Do you want Ibn Abbas or not? I want to put the dots together before okay. you go, so, so that way afterwards okay. you don't say so, that I'm making so up stories. No, listen, so you accept Ibn Abbas, and whatever Ibn Abbas he says, Ibn Abbas is saying, and we accept, yes or no? I'm telling you, but before you go, I want to say something very important, so that way afterwards you, can say you don't say I'm making up you, stories. You can say whatever you want. Okay. This is Ibn Abbas. I, okay, this is Ibn I, Abbas who understands the Quran very well. Everybody okay. will laugh at you in a second and you will say, I don't believe in that. Here we go. go ahead. For the narration About of Ibn, listen, for the narration of Ab Ibn Abbas, he said, the interpretation of Allah saying Qaf, he says, Qaf is an azure mountain overlooking the world and the color of the sky takes from it. Allah swear by it. Do you agree with Ibn Abbas? What? 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 I, I can't even hear you. Oh, you don't hear me now. Ibn Abbas saying that Allah, he swear by a mountain, it's called the mountain of Qaf. And that Qaf mountain is surrounding the earth. 
and the sky is a blue because this mountain is azure blue mountain do you what is what is that what does that have to do with verse 52 because you said ibn abbas can explain the quran so he is the guidance to so explain so he should not he cannot be wrong so, so why are you okay. why are you jumping from topic not, to topic? I'm, finish not, one I'm, topic not jumping, I'm just here. showing you the hypocrisy. Do you accept what Ibn Abbas says or you don't? You said you accept Ibn finish, Abbas. Finish, finish <coughs> one topic and then we'll go here. We are finishing one topic first. Is is Ibn go Abbas, there first and we'll Ibn go Abbas here after. Abbas accepted by you. We'll go here after. You finish said, that first. You Stop said jumping. We are finishing. You said you accept Ibn Abbas. Go there first, finish I'm, it, and we will I'm go there. here. This is Ibn Abbas. Do you accept this is Ibn, not verse 52. Do you accept Ibn Abbas or not? This is not verse 52. L listen, guys, this is not verse 52. What, what, what are you talking about? Even you do not know how to quote the verses. I'm asking you, aren't you the one who chose Ibn Abbas to explain the Quran? Yes or no? You you brought up the topic. Exactly. You brought no, up you the topic. You are the one who called me. You are the one who called me. You chose the topic for now. We were talking about something else about how your prophet died, and you chose the topic. I ask you, do you accept Ibn Abbas? Because we want to be sure that you are not a hypocrite, and Ibn Abbas <laughs> is the person who can explain the Quran. So then you first said in the beginning you said only this verse, and then you took it back because everybody started laughing at you, and then they says no, no, everything Ibn Abbas says the whole Quran. This is the Quran. So if Ibn Abbas is telling the truth about the Quran, and this is what the Prophet of Allah, he said, that means Muhammad is a fraud and Allah is a joke. Do you accept what Ibn Abbas said? You brought up 42 verse 52 the other day. And, you are and the when one, I, and you are the can one I finish who, talking? You, you, you don't let me talk. No, I'm letting you talk. You are the one who accept Ibn Abbas. Did you accept Ibn Abbas or not? Can I explain to you? No, do, do not, there's no need for explanation. Do you accept Ibn Abbas or not? I accept him, but okay. you're not letting me finish okay, to put guys, the dots together. There's no need to dots. Here we go. Read. And we will go to the verse after the verse you mentioned about Ibn Abbas explained. Go ahead. Tell me how Ibn Abbas explained the Quran. Go ahead. Because he's the one I'm, who knows the Quran meaning. Go ahead. You put the tafsir of verse 52 I am showing and we will you finish the tafsir that. of Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is a book. The whole book is not only a page you choose. So you well, you we were talking you about accept, that topic. You accepted Ibn Abbas, and now you don't want Ibn Abbas no more. Why? No, you. Why you? you don't, why you don't? You are the one. Uh, Abdul, you are the one why, that put that topic. You are the one who chose Ibn Abbas. Why you don't want exactly. Ibn Abbas? Exactly. Okay. Why I said, so go why, why, why you don't? I will explain to you. Why you don't want Ibn Abbas no more? Be honest I'm with me. You're not letting me okay. talk. Uh, here we go. I'm not letting him talk. I'm asking you why you don't want to accept Ibn Abbas. You put Surah Shura verse 52 up we'll, there, we'll right or wrong? There. Is that Ibn Abbas or not? Not not for that verse. Not that for that verse. So Ibn Abbas is wrong in this verse. No, I'm not saying that. Okay, so you are, not, you are not saying that. Is he right about this verse? You're jumping topic to topic. Okay, why it's hard for you to say he is right about this verse or he's wrong? Because you're you're jumping topic to topic okay, like a monkey. Say, for, the sake, one... for the sake of argument, I jumped. Why you don't say yes or no? And we will go there right away. So go there and we will come back. We, no, we go, no, you will not be back. We will finish it and we will not be back. We were done with this. So tell me, do you agree with this or not? You, you are a very funny individual. For sure I'm very funny. Here we go. I got you busted. The one who explained the Quran is an idiot. So how do you accept an idiot to be the one who explained the Quran for you? So either you, you Because say, when I told so, you, uh, because, I told so, you the answer. So you agree that he's an idiot now? You said because. When I told you, you just said I because. never said that. So, so, no. Is he an idiot then or not? Do you accept what he just said? I, I never said he's an idiot. So tell me what he is. Don't. Is he telling the truth about the meaning of the Quran, or he's lying, or he is an idiot? He is the cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is one of the best people to okay. give tafsir. He is the best people to the gift of seer. Okay, so the tafsir proving that is time to be false. No. Well, no. He says there's a mountain no. overlooking you, the earth. <laughs> you, you, you always, listen, you listen, always Abdul, get one small thing. Abdul, no, out. I'm not taking a small thing. This is big thing. You do because he is the best one to explain the Quran. Even your prophet, he named him as as the are, ink, as the ink of the afraid. scholars. He is the ink of the scholars. So if this one is the most qualified, according to Muhammad, to explain the Quran, and this is explanation of what Allah says by Qaf, that means the Quran is a joke. You are so afraid to so, talk to me. 
Let us see who is afraid. You are afraid. You're not letting me talk. Do you accept this verse interpretation? Yes or no? You are afraid to talk to me. Do you accept this interpretation? No or yes you know, or no? You don't do this with the other people you debate. When it comes to me, you do this stuff. Ah, we have a, a chain of videos about you people laughing at you, and this is one of them. No, and you they're your supporters. You know of course they're going to. Okay, do you think on. Farid will laugh at me? I have a challenge Do you, you think Farid will laugh at me? Don't mention Fifi for me. You are, you are like a, you, you must be a homo. Keep talking about your girlfriend. Talk to me as a man and be a man. When that girl, yeah, she, so, when that so girl, don't she, jump. when that girl, she dared to talk to me, then mention her name until she call me that she does not exist. So I'm asking you now: Do you accept what Ibn Abbas saying? Yes or no? I accept what Ibn Abbas says, but don't jump topic to topic. Okay, so you promise me now we go back to this topic after we go to the topic you mentioned. Do you promise? Correct. All right. I Guys, do. He accept what Ibn Abbas he said, so he will not say no ever. Let us go. And this is Ibn Abbas. And you are the one who chooses to remember. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, go okay, ahead, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, this is Ibn Abbas. Read that for us. I studied this stuff. <laughs> okay, you studied this stuff. This is why you choose it, right? Okay, read it. It's loading. Hmm. Why is it reading? Open it in your side. You transfer to verse 52? Read it, yes. People will laugh at you for choosing this interpretation, you idiot. You are, okay. a, you are a certified donkey. Okay, yeah, okay, oh, read, yeah, yeah, read, yeah, okay, read, whatever. Read. If they mm -hmm. laugh at you, not Okay, me. read. Mm -hmm. Okay, glad, there you go. Now you just hmm. embarrassed yourself. For the sea. And thus we have, and thus have we inspired in thee, Muhammad, a spirit of our command. We sent you Jibreel with the Quran. Though knewest not what the scripture was, knewest not what the scripture was again, you did not know what the Quran was before the coming of Jibreel to you, nor did you know how to recite the Quran before it came to you, nor what the faith, nor did you know the call to Allah's divine oneness. But we have made it the Quran a light and exposition of commands and prohibitions, the lawful and unlawful, the truth and falsehood, by means of the Quran, we guide whom we will and whoever deserves it of our bondmen. And lo, though, verily, guide to call onto a right path, a straight and true religion. If yeah. you don't understand that, then you're an idiot. Okay, let's see how stupid you are. You are the one who chose it, right? Right. Guys, I understand it. You do not know how to recite the Quran before the Quran comes to you. Look at the stupidity. Because you didn't, he you didn't, didn't hold on, hold on, hold on. You do not know how to recite the Quran until the Quran comes to you. But you have no Quran to learn how to recite it. There was a Quran before he came. I mean, you don't know how to eat the pizza until we sent you pizza. But how, how he, how you can say he do not know how to recite the Quran if there was no Quran yet? And reciting the Be Quran is just repeat after me. I mean, what do you mean? Do you know? Reciting the because, Quran is just repeat uh, after me. The angel he said, say this, he said that after. So you do not know how to recite the Quran. Who is the stupid fool? He can believe in such a garbage. How okay. he will know? Hold on. Is Can that, I answer? Is that a knowledge how to recite the Quran or repeating? Can I answer? Answer. Is it a knowledge to recite the Quran or it's a process of repeating? Uh, let me explain it to you. I'll answer. No, I want the answer. Is it a I will answer Is you. it a knowledge of reciting the Quran or repeating process? When 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 the Quran wasn't preserved to him, how would he know how to read it if this he didn't question. see it? This you sound question. so stupid. Go, go one by one, people laughing. Is reciting the Quran, is it a knowledge or a process of repeating? You know, it's a knowledge if people can read it with understanding. I mean, you can read it too, but okay, you don't understand on. it because hold you're on, an idiot. Hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, you stupid. Recite has nothing to do with understanding. You are a donkey. Recite is to say something from your memory. Do you agree? Wait, say something from your memory yes. or look at the text? Recite what does that have to do with memory? Okay, because you, you are the one who chose the word recite, not me. Okay. Okay, and recite is saying something in your memory. You are jumping all over the I'm place. Jumping, I'm trying I'm to answer jumping. you. What the word recite mean? Yeah, recite when you read something. No, reciting is saying something from your memory, reading something else. So either he was reading or he was reciting. Which one? 
that that's what it says over here in the tafsir i'm asking you is the word recite reading or it was repeating no well you don't know how to speak proper english okay, because reciting go. is considered I reading you are right and you speak proper english but we can go to dictionary recitation is saying something from your memory yes or no he memorized it from his memory but how when he, he heard memorized it? it he did not receive quran yet are you can you read properly you did not Abdul, know what Abdul, the quran Abdul. was before when, the coming when the of angel, Jibreel. when the angel came to muhammad what is the word he said to him the the, the angel uh -huh. told him that you did not know how to recite the quran before it came to you where it says that to him right there did no. you nor did you this know word, how to recite the this Quran is the word of the angel to you. this is the angel talking or Allah hmm? this is the angel talking when angel Gabriel came to him uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. it told him to you nor do you know how to recite the Quran before it came to you this nor the happened. faith this is not what happened what is the first word uh, the angel he said to to Muhammad this guy, I don't know. I, I, I'm explaining Abdul, to him. You He's asking, asking me. I'm asking you. You are a coward. You are a coward like your father, Muhammad. I'm asking you. What is the first word the angel Jibril said to Muhammad? When the angel Jibril came to Muhammad, yes. the coming of the angel Jibril. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. What he said to him? It's explaining to you in the tafsir. What I don't he, need to tell you. No, you need to tell me. Tell me what is the first word he said to him. What, what, what is that? What does that prove anyway? You stupid! Why you don't want to answer? Because that will prove what is the first word he said to him. Give me the answer. What is the first what, word he said to him? What, but what does that prove? I am proving that you are a donkey. Answer me, please. What is the first word he said to him? You know the answer because you read it. No, you are the one who is going to answer it. Are you? And you are scared to say it. I'm not scared to say okay, it. Okay, <laughs> so what it is? What he said to him? What he said to him? I, I gave you the tafsir. No, Read no, the tafsir. No, 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 no. I want you to tell me what is the first word the angel said to Muhammad when he came to him. First time. And ever. I told you. What? The angel Jibril told him, uh -huh. told him that you did not know the book nor faith. So are you saying that the first chapter Muhammad he received was that chapter or what the verse? What? I say to you, you idiot. You see, you are in the corner, you do not know how to get out like a rat. What is the first, the first, the first, the first word the angel said to Muhammad? You keep saying to me, he said to him, you do not know what, recite, what, what revelation and you do not know what faith. This is what is the first thing angel he said to Muhammad? You keep repeating that. You have no idea what you're talking about. I'm Why are you jumping you, to what is the topic? first? You see, you see how stupid you are. I challenge you to download this video, put it in your, in your channel. People will die laughing at you. What is the first thing the angel Jibreel said to Muhammad? You said this. You do not know what faith. You do not know what is what what, what is revelation. You are the one who said that, and you repeat it many times. Are you? Are you? Saying clearly. I am very sure that this is the first thing he said to him. Yes. So the story about the first revelation he received in the cave of Hara is a lie. What, what, what? What, what, what? Mr. Duck, the story of the revelation of Hara, the cave of Hara, is a lie. Because supposedly that is the first revelation Muhammad received, not this one. The, the Quran is the final revelation. Stupid, what do you not understand? Stupid. This is not the, this, this is not the question. We ask you, what is the first revelation Muhammad you say, he said you receive? You said this, verse number 52. Now the question is, so the story of Muhammad receiving revelation where Allah, he said to him, Iqra, and this is a chapter in the Quran, you idiot. That is not the first revelation according to you. The the, the, the Quran but, but, is the but, but, final revelation. But, 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 this is another question. But, 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 he, 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 now you switch from duck to a frog. This is not, you see, you are in the corner. The first revelation you said is verse number 52. And you repeat it a hundred times. Now I'm asking you. So the revelation of read, it is not the first one. Do you agree? Because this is the first one. You you can't stay on one topic. You you jump all you over the place. That you put yourself in the corner. This is the topic you, because you are the one who said this is the first revelation brought to him. We are not changing the topic. 
I, so, uh, you're, you're twisting so, so my man, words. Look, look, guys, look, this guy, this guy, he said that he's a prophet, is a big fraud, and he is a liar. The first revelation is nothing as Muhammad, he said in the hadith, where he said that the angel come to me, and he squeezed me three times, and each time he said to me, read. He did not say to him this verse. He what does him, that have to do with this? Because you said the first revelation Muhammad you receive is a chapter 42, verse number 52. I said that? Yes. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> Get lost. You see why I hang up on you? After I wash the floor with you, after I clean my shoes with you, and then you deny what you repeated for the last hundred times in the last two minutes. You donkey. You said that. You donkey, you son of muta. You are a joke. I challenge you to download the video, to put it in your channel, and tell people I did not say that to CP. He is lying. I ask I'm you trying to, say, to explain you to you. Mold. You don't let me talk. Get lost. For a hundred times I asked you, and you said, yes, this is the first revelation you received. Yes, this is what the angel said to him. Yes. <laughs> I made victory of a Christian prince. I made him hang up on me. <laughs> and I want Ibn Abbas. Show me Ibn Abbas. And I accept Ibn Abbas. And when we show him Ibn Abbas, he don't want Ibn Abbas no more. And look what Ibn Abbas, he said. Ibn Abbas, he made a big poo-poo. Muhammad, you do not know the citation of the Quran until the Quran come. This is what the verse is saying. I mean, what? Brother and sister, before Zibril come to Muhammad, the Prophet did not know how to recite the Quran, as if he had a Quran to recite it. This is, can be said if Muhammad received Quran, and he have it in the shelf, and he do not know what to do with it. Then Jibreel came and he says, okay, Muhammad, let us open this book and we'll teach you how to recite it. But this is not what happened. <laughs> A recitation of the Quran and do not need to teach it because it's a process of repeating. And the first time you repeat it is not a recitation, by the way, because recite is saying something from the memory. Here we go. You go to the English dictionary. Recite. Recite is repeat aloud of uh, uh, declaim a poem or a passage from the memory. So, if Muhammad, he do not know how to recite the Qur'an, until the Qur'an come, that is the most stupid statement ever to say, because the Qur'an confirmed two things. You do not know what book, not the Qur'an, any book. And you do not know what faith, any faith. He has zero faith. And when this idiot tried to save Muhammad, saying, oh, because this is the first revelation Muhammad you receive. And then when we got him busted, he says, did I say that? Go just three minutes before, and you will see, you said that. People, they can go right now, forward, so backward in the, in the video. And you hear me how many times saying to you, are you saying, this is the first revelation Muhammad you receive? And you said, yes over and over and over <laughs> and ibn abbas brother is the best to explain the quran so when we showed him the chapter of uh, the mountains chapter the the, the the mockery chapter this is the god of islam making mockery of the brain of a human being we will go back there later there's a mountain surrounding the earth. And this is where the sky is taking its color from. I remember this guy, he said, that the best to explain the Quran is Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas. I agree. He is the best to explain the Quran. Let us show you more of Ibn Abbas, the one who he claimed that he is the best to explain the Quran. And now after he said he accept 
Ibn Abbas explained the Quran, they cannot ever say, we don't accept Ibn Abbas explanation. What a disaster. Do you see why I hang up on you? No use, no more. Thank you for exposing Muhammad. Islam is leaking. If we go to Ibn Abbas, let us see this verse. Just to make you die laughing at the scholar he accept to explain Islam and the Quran, brother. Don't blame us for laughing at you. And the one who made victory, I want you each time I hang up on you to pause the video on your channel, you coward. The first revelation Muhammad you receive is a chapter 50, 48, verse number 52. What a potato you are. Read carefully Ibn Abbas explaining the Quran. And from the narration, his narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, the one who Muhammad named him specialized him he even prayed to Allah to explain the Quran by Ibn Abbas he said in his interpretation saying Allah said noon what is noon let us see he says noon Allah swear by noon which is the wheel that carry the earth on its back while in water and beneath which is a bowl and under the bowl there's a rock and under the rock there's a dust and none knows what is under the dust save Allah that's deep This is his choice to explain the Quran. And actually, this is my favorite. This is Allah taught, teaching Muhammad. And Muhammad, he taught Ibn Abbas. And Ibn Abbas is teaching us what Allah, he mean by saying noon. So noon is a wheel. Allah swear by it. I know some gods, they swear by dolphin. And some gods, they swear by shark. But some gods, they swear by zucchini. Some god they swear by fig, like Allah, or, or olive. But Allah don't make his swear limitation to fruits and vegetables like fig, fig and uh, olive. He swear even by whale. Come on, the whale is big. So this whale noon, Mr. Noon, he is in the world. I'm so glad he's in the water. Will be very embarrassment if he says he was a flying. At least he put him in the water. So he is the one who carried the earth. He's what? He is the one who carried the earth. Download the video, Abdul. Put it there in your channel. You said to every Muslim, we accept Ibn Abbas. He is the best. Everybody heard you. So the whale who carried the earth on its back. You see, he carried it in his back, not in his shoulder. See how the Prophet knew this? Unbelievable. Scientifically proven, brother. That whale, he swim in his belly and his back is up to the top. How the Prophet knew this? And beneath, which is the bowl, there's a bowl. And now beneath, beneath, beneath. <laughs> And, and underneath the, the bowl, there's a... <laughs> oh boy. Uh, hey coward, using the name of David to do it to call me. Potato. What, he married your mom and you're using his Skype now? Look at this. 
This is the one who he chose for us to explain Islam, brother. And not only that, he did not stop there. And under the ball, there's a rock. And under the rock, there's a dust. And none knows what is under the dust, save Allah. So the guy, he said, stop. To be honest with you, the prophet, he did not tell me more than this. He said, only Allah knows what is beyond that. That's it. We know that there is a water, ocean. We know that the whale is carrying the earth in the top of it, uh huh. And there is a bowl carrying the whale, uh huh. And there is under the bowl there is a dust. Before, after that, sorry, I cannot tell you no more. My my knowledge is limited now. <laughs> and then he continued. The name of the whale is Lewish, Lewish Farrakhan, and he said its name is Lotaya, and the name of the bowl is Bahamut. And some they say the name of it is Telahut or Liuana. The whale is in the sea called Edward, and it is like a small ball in a huge sea. The sea is in a hollow with rock, whereby there's 4,000 cracks in the head of every Abdul. 4,000 cracks. So we have a whale carried by a ball, and the whale is carrying the earth, and under the ball there's a rock, and under the rock there's 4,000 cracks, and from every crack there's water spring coming out from the earth. That's deep. Now, Ibn Abbas will not stop there. Ibn Abbas, he will continue his madness, he says. And it's also said that Noon is one of the name of Allah. Look, he started Noon is a whale, after less than two minutes, Noon became Allah. One of the name of the God of Islam is Noon. So from now on, we say to Muslims, how is your God Noon? People, is that fair? Are we insulting? If the Muslims, they think that one of the names of Allah is Noon, why we cannot call him Noon? Followers of God Noon, I encourage you to call me. <laughs> you are a joke? <laughs> he will not answer no more. I hang up on you, you coward. You heard yourself now saying 1,000 times that the first revelation Allah Prophet you receive is a chapter 42. You idiot, you said that a hundred times. Look like your God Noon is not helping you, Sheikh Fatima. Hmm. The God Noon. Mm -hmm. Allah swear by the pen. And some they say, look at this guy. He keep jumping from. And it's also said that Noon is an inkwell. Like what? And Allah swear by the pen. Swear by the pen Allah. This pen is made of light. And it is height is equal to the distance between the earth. <laughs> For sure, Allah cannot write with short pen. Hello. <laughs> and it is with this pen, wise remembrance, i.e., guarded the tablet, was written, brother. It's also said that the pen is one of the angels. Look at this. The pen became an angel. Whom Allah sworn and which he write with. So Allah here hold an angel in his hand and he write with. <laughs> what a cartoon. <laughs> and this is the brother, Ibn Abbas, the one who can explain the Quran, brother. Brother, take it or leave it. Hey, Abdul, do you accept Ibn Abbas? Yeah, Ibn Abbas, yeah, you know, I accept him. First, he's, he, he, first he was smart. He wanted to say only that verse. And he said that, actually. 
But then when I insisted, he looked, you know, he felt like he looked so stupid because he accept only that verse. Come on. So the rest of Ibn Abbas is a donkey. So he said, oh, all, all Ibn Abbas, except all Ibn Abbas. And now as long as he accept all Ibn Abbas, he's just stuck with it. This is Ibn Abbas. Let us see what Ibn Abbas says about the chapter 86. Brother, Ibn Abbas knows best, brother. Issued from between the loin of the man and the ribs of the women. <laughs> there's, there's a sperm, brother, coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Here the translation says loin. The fact it says bones, a solb. So according to Ibn Abbas, he agreed with Ibn Kathir that the man have a sperm coming from his backbone and women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs. As you see, Ibn Abbas is ripping Allah apart. All Muslims, by the way, they make victory when they speak to me. So why you don't download the video and post it in your channel? As it is, without editing. Challenge. Any Abdul? Anyone? Who is Abdul he think he can do better? Ultimate, are you there? Yeah. Stolen internet. Stop using the internet of the neighbors. We have here uh, a Muslim, he called himself Palestine. Hey Palestine, I have a question for you, my friend. Why Allah never said the word Palestine? Do you have any idea? I mean, you have a big book. Actually, it's very small. By the way, do you know that all the Quran is not even in the size of the index of the Bible? The Muslim, they say to you, why don't recite, remember the, the Bible? First, we do not need to recite it because what is important is to understand, not to recite. Secondly, all your Quran is not even in the size of the index of our book. But the question here, and this is what it's called book, the Quran. How come Allah never said the word Palestine? As long as there's a per person there, he's a Muslim, he say he called himself Palestine. Actually, the God of Islam is a person who he insists that this land, the Holy Land, is the land of the Jews. And actually, he is the one supposed that he gave it to them. Allah is a Zionist. Hello. Hello, Christian Prince. Yes, my friend, how are you? Hello. Yes, I'm fine, and you? I'm good. Oh, cool. Thank you. CP for answering my call. No problem. Uh, I just have a. Uh, uh, yes, I just have a one simple question. Sure. Uh, could you explain me where can I find information about Allah promising uh, big boobs to believers? So in order to show this information to my fellow Muslim friends and relatives. Yeah, uh, 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 our friend here is an ex-Muslim. So those who do not know who left Islam here. Right? Yes. All right. He left Islam. He called me, and he left Islam yes. here. Yeah. Here we go. Chapter. I, I left Islam. I, I left Islam one year ago, yeah. last summer, when I called you twice. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's wonderful. Chapter seventy-eight, verse number thirty-three. Mm -hmm. You got it. 
Yes. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, thank you very much. I just I I, I will use this information. Why thank don't you. Let your friends call yeah, and, 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 Why don't ask and, them to call uh, me? I I I I I I will. Uh, you, because they don't speak English, oh. they are Russians, you know. Oh, okay, okay, I see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, thank you, Siki. Right. No problem. Take care. You know, actually, for me, if there is a reason to convert to Islam, it's going to be the last reason to have to uh, to convert to Islam. Women with big boobs, you know, I get scared of them. I mean, come on. What if she hit you with one of them? She can cause a brain damage. Those are can be dangerous tool for fighting. Like, boof, 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 you know? She can slam you with it. This is not a reward. This is something scary. Or she can suffocate you with it. Like she put them in the top of your nose and you can't breathe no more. You know? Big, big, You know? And that's it, you are dead. What kind of God he tried to convince me that if I believe in him, I will get big boobs? Size matter. Am I seeking a cow? Her big boob will give me more milk. I mean, what is that? This is a woman. What about telling me about this woman who, it's actually not you know, one woman, there's too many women. The heaven have 100 floor, each one of them have different reward and different number of women with big boobs. But you know, I thought about it. Once I was in a high building and I said, if somebody pushed me from the balcony, and if I have a woman like those with me, I will be surviving. Why? Because simply, I will hold her, like I will make her feel down first. You know, I will hold her from her shoulder. I will be, be behind her. So she fell down and then her boobs, the big boobs, like they will do boing, 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 boing. It's perfect. Or imagine now we see a lot of a flooding. With such a big, huge boobs, you can flood over the flood. So I think Allah is thinking about how to save us from the nature. Or if you have a fire, if you have a fire, you can squeeze one of those boobs and all the milk come out and you catch the fire dead. Do you see how Allah, he thinks so far? Look, he saved you from falling from the 30th floor. He saved you from fire by squeezing the boobs. And then he, you know, he saved you. Uh, even you can even beat your friend with it. Let us say your friend come to visit you. huh? And he's rude. And he's bigger than you. You cannot fight him. All what you need to do, order your wife to open her bra and they will run in his face. They will demolish him. He will be suffocated. Ah, not to forget that Allah Prophet, he promised a man that his wife will be Lan milun min al Her butt will not even fit in one mile in the land. And always, you know, I ask myself, why it is so small? Don't call yourself a Christian names and call me. Coward Abdul. Let's see. Maybe we cannot find this hadith in English. <clears throat> I'm trying to find the hadith in English about the, the size of the butt of the women. Well, you know, I mean, uh, the size of the butt is very important. We have to be honest here.
Let's see. Let's try this one. Eh, cannot be found in English, sadly. But we can find it in Arabic. <clears throat> and we can translate. Here we go. This is Musnad al Imam Ahmad, volume number two, page number 537. And this is Islam web.net as you see very Islamic website and the hadith number is 10549 and now what we will do we will use Google translation for some reason my my, my mouse is not working hold on I think by mistake I disabled the right side of my mouse so it's not functioning right let us see smart click okay here we go I think now it's fixed <clears throat> so uh, translate to English Hassan told us from love, 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 from, 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 from the Messenger of Allah, he says, the minimum in paradise status, the one who is the lowest in heaven, the bad Muslim. This is the lowest reward for the bad Muslim. This is the bad, bad, bad Muslim. He will have 300 servants. And look at the translation here, it's really messed up. What happened to the bud? Look, it's each blade color, the beginning as well. Uh, you know, mm, I mean, the, the translation is really messed up. Maybe it's better to use, a, like, to copy a part of it because nothing makes sense anymore here yeah nothing makes sense let us see in different website if we can use google translation again <clears throat> Let me post for you the, the link. You can download, you can you can try to copy yourself and paste like little by little in Google because look like when I click at download, uh, I mean translate the whole page, the whole page is messed up as a translation. Uh, here you will see the last part of the hadith. It says that Allah will give him from the whore twenty uh, sorry seventy two wives additional to his wives in earth and each one of them is going to have her ass will take one mile size of the earth this is how big her ass is so if we copy this part let us open google translation google translate and i will take that line alone And let us see if the translation will be better so we take it here to Google translate <clears throat> 72 wives among the whore al -ain, and wives okay and take her seat as much as a mile from the earth do you see it you see when I copy just part of it the translation came way more accurate so her butt need a seat to sit on it one mile 
So my friend, if you convert to Islam and you are a person who will love big butt, may Allah bless your butt wife. This is the religion you should choose. Because no religion will give you big butt to your wife except Allah religion. Are you a person who like big butt for women? If yes, don't hesitate. What are you waiting for? One mile butt will sit in the top of your nose. Eh, she wanna play with you. She decide to jump in your face. What you can do about it? And then we will call you. Say, hey, Ahmed, Mr. Ahmed, brother Ahmed, where are you? Zakar Naik, where are you? Not the breath. I got the room. Because it is in the top of my. Zakar Naik now entered the butt of one mile butt women. One mile. I mean, don't you think it's small? Why one mile? What you will lose if you make it two mile? Uh, for innocent people in chat, just know that uh, a Christian prince is a Jew prince and he got paid uh, to mislead you. <laughs> Let us blame the Jews. <laughs> this Palestinian boy, his wife, she could not make baby for a century. And then she went to Tel Aviv. She came back and she had a baby in her womb. The husband he says, where you get the baby from? Where you get the baby from? She said to him, well, this is the time to blame the Jews. <laughs> For real. <laughs> hey, Palestinian boy. Christian prince is a Jewish prince. Okay, let us say for the sake of argument, okay. And he is paid by the Jews and... Still, you cannot answer him. He's paid by the Jews. He's paid by the Hindus. He's paid by the cow. Who cares? Still, we are laughing. And you have no answer. It is time to blame the Jews, my friend. So if your wife, she went to Tel Aviv and she came back with a baby, I advise you immediately to blame the Jews for that baby. However, let us blame the Jews or blame Allah. Here we go. This is the stupid Quran saying that Allah, he gave the land to the Jews. Allah is a Zionist. He assigned the Holy Land for the Jews. And he never mentioned the word Palestine. Not even once. Read. Allah told Moses to tell the Jews, go and kill every single Palestinian. Allah, he assigned this land for you. Do you see it? Allah himself is a Zionist. In this stage, Muhammad the coward was trying to be hypocrite to the Jews. So he was saying to them, whatever, make them happy. And what he said? That this is a land assigned to the Jews in the Quran. You will not find one place in the Quran it says that Israel is assigned to the Muslims or to the Palestinians as they call them today. But in the Quran, it assures that those are the Jews, the people of Musa, which Allah has assigned the Holy Land into you. Do you see it? All my people, enter the Holy Land which Allah has assigned into you. Who's talking? Moshe, the Jew. And he gave them back where? Where he gave it to them back? Allah he assigned it for them. That's it. Allah nowhere assign it to the Muslims or to the Arab. And Muhammad Ishmael, you are the one who said that your God Allah, he knew the future. This is additional proof that Allah do not know the future because after two weeks, according to you, Allah changed his mind. <laughs> So, do Allah knew that this land should be not assigned to the Jews? Or he do not know? Do he knew the future? Do he knew that this land will be for the Muslims later? So how he assigned it to the Jews? Do he knew that Palestinians, they will convert to Islam? If they convert? Hmm. Moshe was not a Jew. 
he was from Levi. Oh, that's a good thing, Ishmael. And now you know about the tribes of uh, of uh, of the Jews. That's a good thing. So tell your stupid prophet then why he called him a Jew. <laughs> Are you correcting me or you are correcting your prophet? Because you're a prophet, you consider Musa and his people Jews. Idiot. Isn't it your God? He called the people of Musa Jews. So if Musa is not a Jew, and you said he is from the tribe of Levi, he's, a, he's a, no, he's expert with the tribes. <laughs> you remind, excuse me. You remind me of Mimi Hijab when he said uh, uh, Elijah. Uh, uh, I mean, Allah. Uh, God, so uh, 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 God is with us. <laughs> expert, expert. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. The best comedy. You know, Muhammad Ismail, why you don't, uh, uh, why you don't call me? Honestly, I, I want you to tell me about the tribe of Moses. Can you do that? I need your help. What do you think, guys? Who can help us better than Brother Muhammad Ishmael? You like to call me? We want to talk about the tribes. You said that Moses says he is from the tribe of Levi. Hmm. How do you know that? Is that from the Quran or from Google or from the Bible? Where do you get this uh, Muhammad Ishmael? Hmm. You do not know even anything of history. Who called you a scholar? <laughs> well, tell your prophet. You're a prophet. He think that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron, the brother of Moses. And your prophet, he think that Mary father, his name is Amran, the father of Moses. Is that true? Mr. History? This is, it's even the chapter is called the chapter of Ali Imran. Who is Imran? According to your prophet, he is the father of Mary. But Amram is not the father of Mary. He is the father of Moses. That make it clear more when Muhammad he says, Oh Maryam, sister of Aaron, the eighth he thought that Maryam, the one in the Old Testament, the sister of Aaron, is the same Maryam, the mother of Jesus. So you're a prophet, the history channel specialist. He jumped hundreds of years from Moses to Jesus, and he made Mary, or Maryam, the sister of Aaron, she is the mother of Jesus. Based on Muhammad understanding, Jesus is the nephew of Moses. <laughs> okay, Muhammad Ishmael, I am asking you, as long you are a person who knows history, how Imran, the father of Musa, has become the father of Mary. I'm waiting for the answer. Any Abdul? In the front of you, this is the story where the mother of Mary and the father of Mary story about how they begot or begotten Mary all right and even the chapter the Muslim they call it the chapter of Al Imran okay who is Imran read carefully <laughs> behold the women of Imran said oh my Allah <laughs> 
do dictate unto thee what is in my womb for thy special service. So accept this for me, for, of me. Thus, uh, he rest, knows of all things. Allah, he knows all things. So Allah, he knows all things. He knows that Maryam, she is the daughter of Amran, the father of Moses. And then when she delivered, she said, Oh my Allah, I delivered the female child. And Allah knows best what, what I will do with the female child. You know, so the story here about Maryam, the wife of Imran, sorry, the daughter of Imran and her mother. And this is a history. Is that the correct history or this is stupidity? <clears throat> hmm? I'm making things honestly. Good. Okay, I'm making things honestly, no problem. I'm making things up. Okay, let us go to making things up then. Let us go back to Ibn, Ibn Abbas. I don't like to make things up. I like to say to share the truth. Okay, I will go back to the truth. Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet, said in his interpretation for noon, he says, Allah swear by noon. And he says that the, the noon is a whale which carry the earth in its back while in the water and beneath which is the bowl and under the bowl there's a rock and under the rock there's a dust and none knows what is under the dust save Allah the name of the whale is the wish for a con, and it says Lutaya and the name of the bowl is Bahamut and some they say his name is Telahut and Leona and the whale is called in the sea called Adwad and it's like a small bowl in a huge sea the sea is in a Hollywood rock nearby there's 4,000 cracks hey Palestine am I making things up or this is your God teaching? <clears throat> Who is going to say we are making things up? This is your, this is the King of Jordan website, by the way. The most corrupt man in the Middle East. And actually, I never saw someone, he claimed to be descendant from Muhammad. He is not extremely corrupt. Prove me wrong. The king of Jordan, the king of Morocco. The king of Morocco, just yesterday, he went with the foreign minister of Israel to visit the grave of his father. They are in love with the Jews. The king of Morocco. Corrupt. I convince you that uh, 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 Islam is wrong, brother? No, my friend, I don't want to convince you. I want you to stay as a Muslim and get the big boobs. Get lost. You become silly now. Who, who care if you are convinced you are not? It is your salvation. This is stupid religion. Sunset in murky water. The man will have endless penis. The orgasm will be 70 years. The wife will be, her ass will be one mile. No, no, I do not need to convince you. This is true stories. I don't want you to be stripped from such a butt. I want to see Muhammad Ishmael go into heaven and his penis is endless. Don't forget to take a selfie and post it in Facebook of Allah. I don't know how your phone can capture such an image of an endless penis. I don't think even you can talk to your penis because he's endless. Like, uh, think about it. You are, let us say, you are in the Jannah of Allah. And now your penis, because it's so endless, I don't know, like, is the, end, the heaven of Allah is endless too? Based on endless thing, uh, if the heaven of Allah is endless, that means that your penis will be all over the heaven. Go into the house of Dudu and Susu and Fifi and Mimi and Tutu. Endless penis? Okay. As long as your penis will be endless, where your wife will be located so you can have sex with her, And where she can stop? What is the point of meeting? Do you understand me, Muhammad Ishmael? Now your penis is endless. And now you are going to have sex with your wife. Where your wife she will be located? Because remember, it's endless. That's mean your wife, she cannot be close to you. Your wife, she have to go like a billion mile away. Otherwise, you will not be able to have sexual intercourse. And I have a good news for you, Ishmael. 
Do you know that even if you do and join jihad and get a, to be a murderer for the sake of Allah? Allah will make you a green bird. Isn't it? This is the most lovely dream to be. You join ISIS, you die for the sake of Allah, and now you are Allah will put your soul inside the green chicken. And then Allah will bring you the virgins. And the virgins are so white, women. Huh? Let me show you the hadith. Hold on. I'm trying to find it in English. So now you are a murder for the sake of Allah. And now you are a green chicken. How you will have sex with those women? Are you convinced, brother, that Islam is telling the truth, brother? Look, look how many times this hadith is repeated, brother. Look how many times. Brother, the Prophet of Allah, he said, the souls of the murderers live in the bodies of a green bird. <laughs> That's so lovely. You know what? I always wanted to go and join jihad. So I became a parrot. This is your end, brother. Let me show you the, the pictures, your picture, brother. So now Muhammad Ishmael, he went to heaven. And now Allah, he took his soul and he put it inside the parrot. And now he will say, Takbir! 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 And now, the, you know, the, the, the disappointing thing is that those horny females who Allah, he made them for sex. They are ready for sex and all what they got, not a guy. They got a chicken. They got what? A chicken. The guy, his name is Palestine. He is saying to me, why you don't show chapters 2 verse number 62? My friend, chapter 2 is about Moses too. And how he did make the dead guy come alive by beating him by beef. <laughs> Are you sure you want me to show you chapter 2 verse number 62? Okay, let's do it. Guys, the guy Palestine, he insists. Christian Prince, why you don't show us? Why? Why you don't show us chapter 2 verse number uh, 62, brother? Huh? Why? Why you don't do that? Obviously, you are scared. Why? Why you don't do that? Why? Huh? Okay. I want you in the front of everybody to put the, the chapter two. The you know the the, 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 the uh, Okay. So now we will put for him in the Quran, chapter two, verse number sixty-two. What you expect? Turkey, green chicken. Let us see what this verse would say. <coughs> the leaking pocket. Okay, it has go to 62. It's going to be shocking. That is shocking. The guy, he said, I am paid by the Jews. And now he is saying to us, the Jews will go to heaven. And not only the Jews, the Christian too. And not only the Christian, the Sabian, the one who worship the stars. Muhammad is messed up. The Sabian who worship the stars, they hate the Jews and they believe that God of the Jews, Adonai, is the devil. 
Why? Because he taught them to do circumcision. This is what is written in their book. Muhammad the idiot, he made the Sabian believing in the same God. And look what you did, Palestine, Mr. Palestine. So if the Christian, the Jews, and the Sabian, they will go to heaven, that's mean Benjamin Netanyahu, may Allah bless him and give him a big house and newer bathtub because I heard his bathtub is not doing good. May Allah bless his bathtub. He is going to go to heaven too. So you are a Palestinian and Netanyahu, you will meet Netanyahu in heaven. And the head of the Shin Beit, and the head of uh, the Prime Minister now, all of them will be in heaven. What a messed up religion. So why the Quran says the Jews, they will be killed, kill them, kuffar. What is this? Anyway, I think we had enough for today. Don't forget, I advise the Muslims who claim victory to download my videos and post them as they are in their channel. At least the conversation between me and you as it is. If you are a victorious idiot. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like it. And don't forget to unsubscribe if you don't like it. However, we advise you to unsubscribe because according to Prophet Muhammad, the one who subscribed to Kuffar channel, Allah will take a lot of good deeds from his bank account. You don't want to go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning and you find your bank account robbed by Allah for one reason, because you subscribe to Christian Prince. Allah will send his dog to eat you, remember that. Let us talk about Taliban next time. My friend, there's not going to talk about Taliban. The stupid American are a stupid American. They will not change. They go to a country. They think, you know, let me teach you something. <clears throat> there's a guy. He decided to teach donkey how to talk. So he sat with him for 40 days. After 40 days, he, the guy himself, he came out making the, the voice of a donkey. Those are the American. The American, they think they have, democracy can be spread by occupying the land and by spending some money, and people will change. And we open a school for them, we give them education. Then democracy, my friend, is not something you can spread in Islamic country. Those Americans are stupid. If you stay in Afghanistan for 10,000 years, as long the country is a Muslim country, you are wasting your time, wasting your money. This is why I believe it is the best thing to do is to leave the country. Let Taliban take over it. Why not? What's our business? If those people want freedom, fight for your freedom against Taliban. Americans should not die for the sake of others to free them. And it doesn't matter what they do. They will say they are evil. They are here because they want to seek our money. They spend trillions of dollars. After more than a trillion dollars, Spending in a Afghani army, now there's no army. Why? Because they are just a bunch of employees. So, Americans are, are a bunch of fools when it comes to the, the government. They never learn their lesson. They are a bunch of stupid people who change their mind every six months. Trump, he come, he have different idea. Biden, he come, he have different idea. Tomorrow we have new president, he have different idea. It's not a state, it is a farm, you know. USA, it's a farm. And there's two group of businessmen running the farm. And each one of them, he think this is the way, the best way to run the farm. And they consider the whole earth is a farm. And they want to practice their farming skills on other nations. So Afghanistan, nobody can solve the problem of Afghanistan except people of Afghanistan. People, they cannot earn a freedom unless they fight for it. And the person who don't fight for a freedom, he don't deserve it. So I advise American to leave. Afghanistan never stay there. It's a big mistake to stay there for a day. They should not even be there. You want to fight Taliban, you can destroy them without even going there. Right now, America can wipe Taliban in two seconds, not even two minutes, if they want. But they are potatoes. They don't want to do that. You know. I mean, uh, you can stop Taliban so easy. You can wipe them out. And who is going to question what you did? Nobody. 
But there, there's no will, there's no leaders, there is no government, there's no army. It's a farm, you know? Democrat, you know, they are busy now about its uh, offices and money and uh, it's a business. So America will be a different country if they have a leader, one leader. In America, there's no one leader and they will never have one. And those people in Afghanistan, as long as Islam is there, Afghanistan will never change. As an example, when the American, they choose this guy who is an American citizen, who is a Afghani, to be a president. When a person who leaves Islam, he, they decide to kill him. This is not Taliban. This is the government who is our government. So what's the difference between Taliban and the moderate government? Nothing. They took a guy to jail to execute him because he left Islam under the watch of the American. So what the American are doing there? If not the Australian government, the Australian government, not the American government, jump to save that man, this man will be dead by now. America always support bad government. They never support good ones. Never. This is my experience about America. Go right now and ask yourself, which, which country in the Middle East America support? Saudi Arabia. You tell me how good they are. The King of Jordan. The King of Jordan, if you say one word against him, you will disappear even if you are his brother. The Prince of Qatar. Number one money back for Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Erdogan. Number one supporter for terrorists, he armed them, he trained them, he gave them his land. American always the support the most evil between Islamic countries. And if a Muslim leader in Islamic country, he don't want to practice Islam, America will go against him. And the example is the president of Syria. The president of Syria, he hates Islam. He's anti-Islam. He put Islamists in jail. What America did? They spent hundreds of millions of dollars to take him away. What America did? They forced this guy to run in the lap of the Iranian. What the American did? They put sanctions on this man so he will collapse. So they can have Al-Qaeda rule in Syria. This is what the American do, my friend. So don't tell me, don't ask me to talk about those things. Oil? No, Americans do not need oil. This is this is a big, this is another lie. You see, Americans, they are the last one who need oil. We have oil enough for the coming 1,000 year. We have way more than Saudi Arabia. And look at this idiot, Biden. He don't want to dig for oil no more, so we can buy oil from Saudi Arabia. So we do not need their oil, but they are, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a mess. An American citizen is more foolish than their leadership. When you vote for someone, he is saying to you, okay, we go green. We are not going to dig for oil. So now we are going to buy it. Who is the stupid here? Still you are using oil anyway. In the year 2030, half of the cars for sale will be made in electronic. But until then, people will die. Stop digging for oil by then. When we have cars made by electric, then says we do not need oil no more. So stupidity is amazing. We do not need oil of anybody. The oil we have in Alaska alone is enough to, to feed America for oil for the coming maybe maybe 900 or 1,000 years. Just in Alaska alone. Not to forget Texas and many other places and, and, and the Gulf and the sea and, you know, all over. We have an ocean of oil. We have an ocean of resource. America is a, it's like Russia, Russia. You know, the Russian, they do not need anyone else. They do not need oil of anybody. So... This is not about oil. This is about corporation. Corporations who control this earth. It is not the oil in a country. It is corporation and where is their stock is located. So a corporation who control a, a king, they tell the king what to do because this is where their business is. And the king have to obey, otherwise they will take him down. And this is what happened always in USA. 
the one who elect the king is not the people it is the corporation this is why you see that they are fighting over how much money you can collect collect for the election why somebody need billions of dollars for election if people elect a person why we need that money what the money for the money is to brainwash the people who can control more media who can brainwash more people who can control them by spending more advertising he will win so it is not really about what you think you know many people think that america american you know american america is not a country as much it is a corporation and those corporations now own more than half of the earth we have four or five people in america they own the whole world not only america as an example which country do not need to use google every day which country do not need the service of google or android which country do not need android and apple which country do not need the technology of America? Which country can stay away from the internet of America? This is, the internet is owned by America. And we say America, mostly we are talking about corporation. So the one in control is not the American, it is the corporation of America. Few names controlling the whole world. So you become a slave of those five Americans, including the American themselves, become a slave of them. The owner of Google here, he can shut me down. Like now, they stop allowing me to have donation. Why? Because I don't. They don't agree with me about what I say. They want me to say things in order to receive money. You see how they control you? I used to be able to receive donation in YouTube. And why they don't allow me? Because I am against their guideline. A person who teach terrorism saying that the one who leave Islam should be killed he can't collect donation in his channel I cannot so those corporation are terrorist corporation they use their own you know terrorism is not only by violence it can by cutting your income it can be by muting you it's like when a man he beat his wife this is terrorism so they try their best to force you to be their slave, to be their dog. If you are their puppy, then you will make money. Then they will support you. Just be their puppy. So the question is, how many of us is willing to be their puppy? As long as you are their puppy, then they will bless you with their money. The money of the devil. If you don't agree to be their puppy, then there is no donation. You cannot do that. Very simple. Imagine the president of USA, they locked down his account. Look how powerful they are. Can you imagine the guy who controls nukes, the one who can burn the earth? They locked down his account. They close his account in Twitter, in Facebook, and in YouTube. We are talking about the President of United States, not somebody working in the post office. So this is a scary mafia. Those corporations are the biggest beast ever created in, for mankind. They are even bigger than the beast of Islam. And because both of them they are evil, both are in total agreement. They don't fight against each other. You will see Google always protect Islam. This is why I cannot keep my videos for more than a few days. I mean, did you ask yourself, a guy, he making videos for a long time. When David Wood, he started his channel, he, I mean, this was like first day for him. It was more than 15 years already for me. So where's my videos? Why I cannot keep them there? Because the beast 
is the guardian of Islam. They will not let you humiliate this cult. Otherwise, I will keep it there. I mean, the video have uh, 50,000 view in three days. Why I want to take it down? Because YouTube is the devil of Islam. Why I close my account in Facebook? Why I close my account in Instagram? Why I close it in Twitter? Because whatever I post, they block it. If you are a Muslim, posting video about being hidden, they don't block you. In the same time, sadly, even Christians don't support us. Christians, they send me messages schooling me about how to talk. They want to teach me how to talk. Not only we have war with the devil of Google and the devil of Facebook and the devil of the social media and the devil of Muhammad, we have war with the Christians. Uh, they gave me an ad in my video because I played a, a, a song, it's called I'm Sexy and I Know It. I played not even 10 seconds of it. When you play that, there's a copyright so they can place an ad on it. And the ad was a Muslim ad. <laughs> Donate for a mosque. <laughs> they force an ad on my channel, can you believe it? Do you remember when I, you know, they, uh, I was, uh, I was going live on air, and then they, they sent me, and you remember? Yeah, I was live. They gave me warning right away. <clears throat> so, my friend, and and by the way, I'm not telling you to be disappointed. No, that even will make the fight better. You see, uh, it's boring <laughs> if there's no fight. We are better Christians when the devil fight us more. You know what I mean? So don't think I'm complaining. I'm not. Praise the Lord, I'm very successful. As you see, Muslims are leaving Islam left or right. My videos is all over. If you go right now and search YouTube, me, myself, I get scared when I search for my name in YouTube. I mean, my videos is all over. My books is all over. My books translated to all languages in the world. Soon we will have it in Chinese. So, are we successful? Absolutely. When they fight us, they bring us success, not the opposite. When they fight me, they bring me more support, not the opposite. You know, I say to you my experience, that the more they fight me, the more the Lord He sends support to me. How? I can't explain to you. The more they try to close door in my way, the more doors open. So don't ever think that they are strong and we are weak. They are the weak. And this is why they try to mute us, to silence us. The strong one, he do not need to silence others. Say whatever you want. They speak about the freedom of speech, but it is only their freedom of speech is allowed, for they are hypocrite. Uh, we have a Muslim here is posting this verse for us. Let me show you this verse just to show you how stupid Islam is. Thank you, my friend, the miss, the one who was posting this. Muhammad, because he could not, you see, Muhammad is the same as a social media today. So this Abdul is posting this verse for us in the chat. And this verse again, proving Islam to be false. So this is the this is the comment of this Abdul. 
May Allah sharp the virgin nails for him. يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره بلا 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 بلا. Let us see what this verse is about. And then you will you will die laughing. Chapter nine, verse number thirty-two. Fain would they extinguish Allah light with their mouth, but Allah will not allow it. See, you just to prove to us that Allah is a dumb, is a stupid, and he cannot do it. Because if Allah, he will not allow it. So why Muslims are leaving Islam when I talk to them? And why no Muslim can debate me and win? And why you don't call me if this verse is with you? You will win. If this verse is true, then you call me immediately and you will have victory because nobody can uh, take, distinguish the light of Allah. So this verse is false. And why you need to do jihad if Allah protecting the faith anyway? And why you want to kill the apostate if Allah, nobody can silence or mute his light? So my friend, Islam without lies dies. Islam without sword is dead. So you need two things to protect Islam, sword, violence, and lies. Allah Nur does not exist. Thank you for posting this verse. You prove to us that Muhammad, he could not answer the Christians, the Jews, you know, especially the Christian and the Jews. And because of that, he said, oh, they want to extinguish the light of Allah. What is the answer? He could not debate them. Now, what is the light of Allah? The light of Allah that there is a penis which is English and there's a woman with big boobs waiting for you. That is the light of Allah or this is the light of the nipples. Is that the light of Allah to promise me women for sex and children for sex? It is the light of Allah to give me women who have vagina and nobody touch it? Is that the light of Allah? Where is the light of Allah? If you want, I will go to Skype again and I can take a call from you, MES, and tell me how the light of Allah, how the light of Allah work for you. When the Jewish woman, she killed Muhammad and he died by poison, was she successful to distinguish the light of Allah? She killed Muhammad. And Muhammad described in the Quran as Siraj and Muniran. So he's light lamp. Not only a light, he's a lamp. Here we go, a Jewish woman. She extinguished the light, the light of Allah by little poison. She went to Home Depot. She bought, she bought uh, rat poison. Muhammad, he ate it. The rat, he died. So how nobody can extinguish the light of Allah? And then we find that the goat ate the Quran, and a lot of the Quran is missing. But nobody can extinguish the light of Allah. Okay, where is the verses of a breastfeeding for adult? As long as nobody can extinguish the light of Allah. Hmm? I don't ban people. If I block you in the chat because I want to, I want you to call me. It's the opposite. I open my Skype and says any Muslim is willing, to, you know, welcome to call me. Any Muslim, I don't even accept a call from Christians. I don't block you. I want you to talk to me. So where is the light of Allah? How come Allah did not warn Muhammad not to eat the goat which full of poison, so he will not die? The Muslim they say that the goat spoke to Muhammad. The goat spoke to him after he ate her. How stupid is that warning? The goat was de dead. The, the goat is dead and now Muhammad is talking to the goat and the goat she said to him, Prophet, don't eat me. Uh, hold, hold on. Al -al Amin, he's saying, uh, sadly, somebody deleted his, uh, his message. Okay, let me, let me copy his message. I will put it in the screen. 
Al Amin is saying the following. Thank you, Al Amin, for your post. You see, you are welcome, but you are exposing your prophet again. You said, Christian Prince, you are just a four month moth, mock, uh, mocker debating. You just you you is like a wrestling with garbage back. Why would decent Muslim would do that? Okay, that's a good thing to say. So the one who whistle, whistle with garbage back is not worth of a fighting with him. Correct? That's wonderful. Well, you idiot, you just said that the one who have a bad mouth is not worth to speak to. The one who do mockery is not worth to speak to. So when your prophet, he said, the man who is proud about his inheritance before the, in the time of Jahiliyyah, before Islam, go and tell him, by the, the penis of your father, is he worth to talk to? The one who is against foul mouth, first of all, show me where I use foul mouth. If I say the word vagina, because your prophet says vagina. If I say penis, because your prophet says penis. Here we go. Your prophet says the one who is proud about his inheritance before Islam, tell him to go and bite the penis of your father. Is that a foul mouth? It's not mine. I'm quoting your prophet. So look what you just said. You just admitted that your prophet is a filthy man. When we quote him, we will sound dirty. Don't quote Muhammad because the second you quote Muhammad, you sound filthy and your mouth is filthy. Thank you for saying that. Or shall I show you Abu Bakr saying, go and suck the clitoris of Allah? Suck the clitoris? Is that how you say to a, to a man? Go and suck the clitoris? Or what about your God? in the Quran who speak about the penis of Muhammad? Or what about your God who start doing mockery of the uncle of Muhammad and his wife? So the Muslim, when you quote for him what his prophet said, he gets so upset and he consider it a foul mouth, a mocker, a garbage bag. And you mentioning garbage, that is very good news for me. Look at your prophet. Your prophet is the only one who claimed to be a prophet from God who asked you to clean yourself when you do abolition to pray. Yet he do abolition by washing himself by garbage. Read with me and laugh. Why somebody want to fight with the garbage bag? You are right. That is Muhammad. Read carefully. Abu Sa'id al Khudari said that some people ask Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, whether they might perform a pollution out of the will of Buddha, which was the will which minstrel clothed dead dogs and stinking things were thrown in. Do you see it? The prophet was talking to arrogant? Doesn't matter. The foul mouth is a foul mouth. I never use foul mouth language. And I'm talking to arrogant too. You must have you think you are superior, and you are not. You think you are the best of mankind, as the Quran says, and you are not. Islamic country is the most corrupt countries in the world. A woman, she cannot walk alone in the street without being harassed sexually or even kidnapped or raped. This is why you need a guardian with your wife when she walk in the street. A Muslim, he cannot have a window in the Middle East or Islamic country without bars. You walk in USA, you don't find single bar in the window. Go drive all over USA. You will not find one single bar on the window. Why? Why in Islamic country you cannot have a window without bars? Is that because you are trustworthy or because a nation become a nation of thieves? So you claim to be the best and you are the worst. Why a woman she need a guardian when she walk in the street? If she is secure and she lives in Saudi Arabia and all our believers, why she need a guard? Well, she need a guard because Islam turned human being into a beast. So the second they see a woman alone, she is a target. But this is not the case in other countries. Women, they go to the mall, they do shopping, they, they go to work, they go alone, they, they even stay late.
Are you there? And you know, not to forget, Muhammad is the best example of Muslims. Muhammad, he went to his own son house. This is why, by the way, in the Middle East, Muslims, they trust Christians. They don't trust Muslims. When I used to go to Muslims when I was in high school, I go to a Muslim, like a Muslim who is in my classroom, nice people, you know, they are, they are, they are good people. I, I cannot say they are bad. I go to their house. Their mother, she opened the door. She is even wearing see-through. And their sisters, I sit with them. I talk to them. Very nice people. But when a Muslim, he knock at the door of the same house, and I am inside, all the females have to hide immediately. Even though the male who is coming is just a school guy like us. He is in my age. So when a Muslim come, this is what I learned. When a Muslim come, the sister of this guy, they hide. His mother hide. They don't even bring the coffee to the room. The guy, he go to the kitchen, he bring the coffee. When I am there, I sit with them in the living room. And they don't change their clothes. I drink my coffee or my tea with his sisters and his mother. They are not ashamed or they are not shy. But when a Muslim come, you see the difference? Muslims don't trust Muslims. And the guy who is listening, he knew that this is true. And why they want to trust a Muslim when Muhammad, he made Islam a mockery. Muhammad, he went to the house of his own son. What he did? He flirted with the wife of his own son when she is married. Is that true? It's in your book. And just to show you the stupidity of Islam. When a blind man came to visit Muhammad, the Prophet, he said to them, put hijab, put hijab, put burqa, hide behind the curtain. Do you know when I say the stupidity is amazing? Let me show you an amazing stupidity. Read with me carefully. This is Sahih Hadith. They cannot say it is weak and this garbage, you know? All this madness. So it says here I was with Allah Messenger, this is the wife of Muhammad saying, along with Maymuna, this is the other wife. He have he was having three sons. When Ibn Umm Maktoum, which is a blind man, and who was a blind, come to visit him. Okay, so a blind man come to visit Muhammad. Look what happened. This incident took place after the order of hijab. Okay. The Prophet told us to hide ourselves. <laughs> like what? <laughs> we said, oh, oh, messenger of Allah, he's a blind. <laughs> And able to see us nor does he knows us he replied are you blind too and you are unable to see him any Abdul here so are you saying that Muslim women are not allowed to see men are you saying that Muslim women are not allowed to walk in the street and their eyes is open So what hijab is? So all the hijab we see Muslim women are wearing is a fraud. Because the hijab of a Muslim woman is a Muslim woman, she should not see anyone. Not only she has to cover her hair as they lie to us. Hijab is putting a woman behind the curtain and no man can see her and no man she can see. Prove me wrong. And the stupid Muhammad, he is saying to the women, wear hijab. Like, wow, you idiot. So why why they want to wear hijab? Oh, no, no, okay, wear hijab. And now because they got him busted, he's stupid, he's a fool. He noticed that the women are smarter than him. But he cannot admit that he was a stupid when he said that because the guy is blind. So he had to cover it. He said, so, okay, well, he's blind. Are you blind too? You see the stupid? You see the stupidity? This is Islam. 
a man he don't trust, his name is Muhammad. He is the prophet of Islam. A man who is a blind, poor guy, he don't even trust that guy to be in his house and the women is there. So why Muslims they trust each other? They will not. But the reason Muhammad he don't trust any man to see his wife or even not to see even the blind, because he is filthy. He knew what he do when he go to the house of others. You know what I mean? When a person is guilty of something, his guilt is always there. If a thief is a thief, he see everybody else is a thief. Are you getting my point? A man who go to spy at women of others, he believe every man will spy at his wives too. So Muhammad, he believe that if this blind man, he come, he is going to be dangerous to his wives because his wives will see him and they will get horny. It's haram. He is insecure. It's a clear sign of insecurity. And this is what Islam brings to a human being. Make you insecure. Hijab is a sign of insecurity, not security. The woman is a vagina. We cover her because she is at risk. Oh, I have to protect the vaginas. I have four vaginas. I have to protect them. So wear the hijab. Okay, put your head in the ground. Don't look there. Don't look there. Because the man is insecure. He believe his wife, if she look at the man, she will have a wet dream because he don't do what the man need to do. If there's any Muslim that agree with me, And by the way, even Allah himself, he wore hijab. Allah never speak to anyone except from behind of a hijab. And this is in the Quran. Chapter 4, 42, verse number 51. Hijab is not a hair cover. Only foolish people think that. Hijab is a curtain. This is why he said to them, hide yourself behind hijab. And what is what he want? So they cannot see the blind man. If hijab is a cover for the hair, well, the man, you know, they can see still, they can see the man, correct? So hijab is a veil as a curtain. This is what hijab is. But the hypocrite Muslim today, they don't want to follow Muhammad teaching. They don't want the curtain. They want just a hair covering. But this is not what Islam teach. Because as you see, even the hadith confirm it. If the hijab is a hair covering, then okay, they cover their hair. They do not need to hide themselves from the guy, right? Or, or, do we agree? If hijab is a hair covering, all what those women need to do is to cover their hair, which is no point because the guy is blind anyway. Right? So even though he's blind, he is asking them to hide themselves. Read carefully, even the Muslim in their translation says to you, he told us to hide ourselves from him. Between two brackets, i.e. observe hijab. Okay, so is hijab now is something in the hair or the sea? If this is the case, that will be stupid because the guy is blind. So they said to him, well, he's blind. He can't see us, nor recognize us. He replied, are you blind too? So the hijab is not covering their hair. The hijab is hiding themselves from the ability to see someone else. That is a curtain. Anyway, this is not the only thing Muslim they always have wrong understanding. Uh, like Muhammad do not know how to read, how to write. Nowhere in the Quran says that. The Quran says Muhammad he do not he is ignorant. He do not have a book. He's ummi. Ummi is coming from the word gomai, the, the Jewish word for for the, the from the nations. He's from the, not from the Jews, Gentile. So 
Muhammad is a Goma, Muhammad is from the Gentile, Muhammad is from the nations, he is not from the Jews, he is not from the blessed nation. This is what the Quran is saying. The Muslim they come and says he was unable to write or read. When there's nowhere it says that. Anyway, guys, I think it's time for us. Do we have any Muslim want to call? If there's any Abdul want to call? I can take one more call for the sake of the shin of Allah. Anyone? I remember Islam makes sense. God cannot be a man, but he can be a shin. Makes sense. God cannot be a man, but he have five fingers. Well, that makes sense. God cannot be a man, but he have two eyes. Okay. God cannot be a man, but he have a physical shape. Okay. But God is almighty, but he cannot be. How he can be almighty and he cannot be. So all the logic of Islam is broken and it is leaking. They lie to themselves about good deed and bad deed. Where is the good deed in Islam? There's no good deed. As you see, everything is destination. Even a thief, he still because Allah destiny for him to be a thief. So where is where is the where is the the thief? There's no thief. The real thief is Allah. And we showed you a video from the from the mouth of those Abdul. Explain how a person who stole, they brought him to the caliphate. And this person, he should be punished. Like, why he should be punished? Because he's a thief. But as long as they believe in the predestiny, how you can punish a thief? Allah, he is tonight for him to be a thief. Yes. Then obviously, you would be the fool. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab, عنه, according to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he, had, he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab عنه, and he uses the same line. He says, Oh Umar, Oh Amir al Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to see. This is a good argument if you think about it. <laughs> Stupid religion. So how you want to punish me for, for a sin Allah he forced on me? And this is a pretty good argument if you think about it, the Shaykh he said. One of the uh, narrations. Uh, he had he needed to be punished because he stole so he comes to umar ibn khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line he says oh umar oh amir al mu'mineen how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined my deeds were already written by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it yeah. umar ibn khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man he says well Let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. See? Wow. So these deeds, so it goes to show that you cannot use an, as an excuse the fact that Allah has predestined things. <laughs> you cannot use it. You cannot use it. I mean, you see the stupid logic? This is shows that you cannot use it. This is shows that the caliphate is arrogant and he's stupid. And he is not consistent because if it is a destiny that I will be a thief, then what is my fault? If Allah decides for me to steal, can I stop Allah's destiny? No. See how stupid this religion? And then the guy, he says to you, nobody can stop the nur of Allah. My friend, the nur of Allah is fart. Who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? So you go and do fornication and then... Allah want to punish you for fornication when Allah he is the one who wrote for you how much fornication you would do one thing I have to say before I leave for today stupidity is Islam and Islam is stupidity itself and you cannot be a person who have little brain and you don't find this is stupid that I destiny for you to do be a criminal, and then I will punish you for I destiny for you to be a criminal. That is even a crime. If I force somebody to commit a crime, and then I want to punish the one who commit the crime, the one who commit the crime for real is the one who forced him, not the one who did it. If a captain, he ordered a soldier to shoot a woman, 
and the soldier he had to obey order otherwise he will be executed who is the real criminal it is the captain so the real criminal in Allah in Islam is Allah if destiny is true so Islam is a silly stupid sick funny dummy garbage cult collect every contradiction in the world put it together and then they say to you this is Islam and then they come to you with the false miracles they say the Kaaba is in the center of the earth and then if you search you will find that the Kaaba is always flooded by sewage Allah he choose the location of the Kaaba brother Allah he chose the location it's amazing location in the center of the earth why the earth is flat and the one who chose the location of the Kaaba why he chose the worst location in the world where the sewage cover it every year almost until the American they come with a solution this is your Kaaba flooded by sewage Allah he chose the location for the Kaaba this is how God he chose the location of his house shall we go swim do you think we have fish there it's dirty water and why Allah cannot lift the Kaaba location from the ground I mean he can order the earth to come up and that's it just 10 meter up the Kaaba will never be flooded so Allah chose the right location the first thing a human being when he want to build a house he should check the elevation of his house to see especially in our you know I mean we are talking about Allah his God suppose he do not need Google now you can go to Google, you can see how high your ground compared to other ground in the neighborhood. And then you can predict when the, if your place is going to be flooded or not. But this is God. God do not know that his house will be flooded if he chose it in that location. God, he cannot stop the flood to his house. And people taking selfie, swimming. This is the house of Allah, thanks to the oil. Now there's marble, now there is air conditioning. You should see the house of Allah just right after the oil start coming. Let me show you. It's like a stable of a horse, literally. This is the Kaaba. This is the house of Allah for the for the last 1400 years. This is the house of God. The Muslims, the, the, the old man, they were building their palaces. The Muslim, the Caliphate, they were building palaces using the Christian builders in Spain, the Christian slaves. But their Kaaba is like this. Look at this Kaaba. Look at this. This is the Kaaba. Nobody even lived there. This is just a hundred years ago. Look at this. Donkeys and camels around the Kaaba. And go look at the Kaaba today. It's the biggest business. Saudi Arabia make billions of dollars every year from Hajj, from people visiting the Kaaba. Five stars hotels around the Kaaba. Towers. Look at this. This is the Kaaba. <laughs> what is that? Those are pictures showing you the change around the Kaaba from a bunch of tents 
bunch of small houses, a small tiny stable room, there's no roof, then we put a roof, then we start, you know, and, and look, even the Kaaba, they put a burqa for the Kaaba. And this is the house of their God. The house of any Muslim is better than this house. He spent more money in it. When the Saudi they start getting their oil, the Saudi they notice how much important for them to increase tourism toward the Kaaba. So they start building hotels, they start putting marbles, they have air conditioning, spray air condition, because it's extremely hot there. And they start advertising airlines, etc. And now Kaaba is a Las Vegas. And it's number one city for drugs in Saudi Arabia and prostitution. And now, by the way, the Muslims are trying to, uh, to, 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 to divide the timing between women and men around the Kaaba. Why? Because there's a lot of molestation around the Kaaba always happening. Especially when it's busy. Every horny man in Mecca, if he want to molest women, he go and he try to, he claim that he is going around the Kaaba. He go behind the women and he start touching her. And now they are thinking seriously about separating between the men and the women. And look at this religion. If Al Kaaba is, is being flooded, that make Islam false, then tell us what happened to the Holy Temple of Solomon. What happened to the Ark of the Covenant? Big and play with it. Okay, let, let's, let us show you how stupid what you just said. Jesus, he predicted that this temple will be destroyed. Correct, guys? And God always, he punished his people for a crime they do against him. God don't care for a rock. God care for the people. When they are wrong, God punish them. So Jesus, he predicted that this temple will be destroyed. And he said, not a stone will be above a stone. So this was not a surprise for God. You are being silly. Now, when we see that the Kaaba is destroyed by al qurmuti and then your prophet, he claimed that the Kaaba have a Lord will protect it. Rabbun yahmiha. The Kaaba have God protected. Is it the Kaaba, according to the Quran, the chapter of the elephant, an army of elephant came to destroy the Kaaba? And then Allah, he sent an army of birds to fight the Ethiopian, which is a fiction story. How come Allah did not protect the Kaaba from the flooding or from um, the Caliphate or Al-Hajjaj or uh, 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 al Qurmuti, not only he destroyed the Kaaba, he was screaming in the middle of the, 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 the square yard of the Kaaba saying, hey Allah, where are you? Where is your birds? And then he took the Kaaba and he made it a pupu stone for more than 20 years. And then the Muslims, in order to get the black stone back, they have to pay al Qurmuti ransom. Imagine, they send the messenger to the Caliphate of al Fatimi. Those are the Shia. Saying to him, we beg you, speak to al Qurmuti. Tell him how much he want to give us back the black stone. Where was Allah? So in your Quran, Allah, he claimed that he protect the Kaaba when the Kaaba was surrounded by kuffar, by idols. And then Allah don't protect the Kaaba when the Kaaba have no idols around it. Why? Do you see the stupidity? The God of the Jews, he told them that you will be taken, that you will be enslaved, that you will be even cursed if you don't follow me. They are punished. Here, what's happening here? Allah, he punished the Kaaba, his house. The temple of Solomon is the temple of Solomon. It's a temple built by man, not by God. So? <laughs> where Allah he said nobody can destroy the Kaaba oh, let me show you let us see guys where Allah where it says nobody can destroy the Kaaba let us go even though I supposed to go soon but let us have fun 
You never heard of a chapter is called the chapter of the elephant? Your God is the zoo God. Alam Tarwa, don't you see how your Lord did to the companion of the elephant? What the companion of the elephant they were trying to do? Can you tell me? Are you there? They were coming to destroy the Kaaba, correct? <clears throat> and why Allah He sent the birds? Because Abdul Muttalib He says the Kaaba have a Lord will protect it. Is that correct? And suppose to Allah he sent his birds. Are you there? Who can protect the Kaaba save Allah? Nobody. Any Abdul? Now for sure this is a fiction story, you know, stupid story. Because as you see the Kaaba was destroyed many, many times, not only once or twice or three times. Actually me myself, I made a video, a translation for a video made by Muslims speaking about the one who destroyed the Kaaba. Al-Qurmati, when Al-Qurmati destroyed the Kaaba, Muslims were leaving Islam like crazy. Because he showed everybody that, you know, the Kaaba protection is a lie. And this verse is a lie. And how in the world even an army of elephant can come to Mecca? Do you know how much water the elephant need a day? Do you know really how much water need? The elephant not only need a lot of water to drink, he need a lot of water to cool down. He cannot keep walking in the desert. There's no rivers, there's no lakes. An army of elephant coming all the way from Ethiopia, all the way to Mecca. Is that a joke? Ali Muhammadan? I mean, if you say to me an elephant in Africa, I say in Africa there's a great rivers, there's a great trees, there's desert, yes, but there's a places for elephant to survive. But in Mecca, there's no water. In the way to Mecca, there's no water, there's no rivers, there's no lakes, there's I mean, a, a, an elephant, he cannot go long without water. He will die. He need a huge amount of water. He spray himself, not only to drink, he need to spray himself to cool himself down. He need to jump in the water. Otherwise he will die. So who in the world will believe such a fiction story? And hold on, as long as Allah, he, he protect the Kaaba by, uh, by birds. Why you need the F-16 from the American and the Awaks when Saddam Hussein, he attacked Saudi Arabia? Why you need now the American to protect you from Iran? All what you need to do, put your missiles around the Kaaba and then Iran cannot shoot because Allah will protect it. Bring all your defense system, all your missiles huh? and shoot from around the Kaaba. Iran shoot back, Allah will shoot it down. Why you are buying the American weapon like crazy?
So, you know, this is always a joke. Uh, <clears throat> and the funny, Allah, he protect the Kaaba when the Kaaba was surrounded by more than 300 idols. Against what? Against a, a Christian army. <laughs> Isn't Muhammad, he said, the Jews and the Christian, they will go to heaven? So why Allah do not want the Christians to free the Kaaba from the pagan? Do you see the stupidity? Allah is a pagan God. If the one controlled the Kaaba at that time, they are pagan. Why Allah don't want the Christians to take over? Which one is better? Somebody have 360 idols around the Kaaba or Christians? So Allah, he don't want the Christians. He preferred the 360 pagan God. And why Allah protect the Kaaba when the pagan are around, but he don't protect the Kaaba when the Muslims only was there? Let me see if I can find you. The video about the Kaaba being destroyed. Here we go. This is a sheikh. His name is Muhammad Hassan. Muhammad Hassan. Oops. Sorry. This is Muhammad Hassan. بأن الحجر الأسود قد سرق من الكعبة وأخذ. وظل الحجر الأسود بعيدا عن الكعبة واحدا وعشرين عاما أو يزيد تقول إيه ما يسمعش محمد كلام ده صحيح جبته منين تقرأ التاريخ بقول لك انظر للتاريخ نظرة أعمق ارجع للتاريخ انظر نظرة أشمل الحجر الأسود انتزع من الكعبة أيوة مين ده الخبيث المجرب أبو طاهر القرمطي الذي انتزع الحجر الأسود من بيت الرب العلي وذبح المسلمين في الطواف وهم يطوفون حول بيت الله جل وعلا ذبحهم كما تذبح الخراف والأغنام ذبحهم وهم يطوفون بملابس الإحرام وانتزع الحجر الأسود وخلي بالك بقى شايف الفتنة ظل يصرخ في الكعبة في صحن الطواف يقول أين الطير الأبابيل أين الحجارة من سجيل يا خبر أبيض ده تحدي واضح بتقول لنا طار ابابيل نزلت على ابراه الحبشي وبتقول لنا حجاره من سجل نزلت على ابراه فين الطير دي؟ انا عاوز الطير عاوز الحجاره يا الله سي ذا جاي هي ديستروي ذا كابا هي توك ذا بلاك ستون ميك ات ا بوبل ستون اند هي واز سكريمينج ان ذا ميدل اوف ذا كابا سيين تو الله وير از يور بيردز يور لاير وير از يور بيردز مسلمز ار يو ذير؟ And this is your sheikh, he's a famous sheikh in Egypt. I clean my shoes always with his beard. He's explained to you that he was shouting, saying, Allah, where is your bird, huh? What you can do about it? Here we go, I destroyed the Kaaba. I destroyed the Kaaba, I took the black stone, I'm going to piss on it. What you can do about it? What Allah he did? Nothing. The Muslim, they have to pay him back money to get the black stone and what the Muslim they got today. Did he even give them the black stone? He gave them little rocks. They did not get the black stone. They got little tiny rocks. This is what is left of the black stone. Look at this. All the brown you see is a wax. It is what? It's a wax. The only stone, or kind called a part of a stone, is those little tiny things, little rocks in the middle. You see it? There's no black stones, nothing left. 
So the story about the black stone sent by Allah is a joke. Why Allah could not protect his stone? What is the stone? Look what happened. Look what we what we have today. The Muslim they go to Hajj kissing black stone. No, they don't. They are kissing little rocks. And the Saudi they insert it inside wax. This is why they have guards and they have a camera installed there. So if somebody tried to pick it up by a little knife or something or even by his nails, he will not be able. Erdogan, he have one of the rocks of the black stone. He's proud about stealing it from the black stone. Imagine the Turkish, they stole a rock from the black stone. So now they have one, two, three, four, five, six. Erdogan, he have one. There are seven. He claimed that this is one from here, small, tiny one. <laughs> Erdogan he stole a stone from the stone of Allah, and Allah could not even was not able to stop the Turkish from stealing his stone. And yet they say to you, the black stone is sent by Allah. Okay, and it's going to witness for you in the judgment day. It's going to have a mouth and a tongue, but as you see, nothing left of it. What a stupid religion. Anyone have little brain, he will notice that this is a joke. This is just a pure pagan cult. If the black stone sent by Allah, then Allah should keep the black stone until the judgment day. But to say to me now, there's nothing left except some wax and we go and kiss wax. And the wax is fixed by, by, by a guy from Pakistan. You can go right now and search in YouTube, uh, maintenance for the black stone. I'm not joking. Search for maintenance for the black stone for the Kaaba. I will search. I'm typing in Arabic. It's okay. I type in Arabic by mistake, but Google understood me. Look. They are doing maintenance to the black stone. <laughs> you see? <laughs> look, look. He have he have like a, 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 a like a heated cable, and they are putting the wax. You see, the wax is smoking inside the black stone. Your God, he need the maintenance to his stone, which he sent to witness for you in the judgment day. So without maintenance, the stone is gone. There's nothing left. Do we need to make maintenance to Allah Shin too? We have maintenance for the Quran. We have maintenance to the Kaaba. We have maintenance to black stone. Islam, all of it need maintenance. It's a pocket is leaking and we have to put fingers in every hole to stop the leak. Good luck. Anyway, I hope we have a good time for today. Don't forget to download the video, share it with your friends. I will try to make shorter videos, and but this is what happened. I plan to go for a short video, honestly. Like today, I was saying to myself, let me go there for 20 minutes. Can you believe it? Let me go there for 20 minutes. And now it is 3 hours and 13 minutes. So I need to put an alarm next to me. And that's it. I say 20 minutes. I will make it 20 minutes when the <laughs> alarm is done. <laughs> anyway, guys, I love you very much. I appreciate all of you. I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of the Muslims. Don't hate them. Love them. They are victims of the stupid and the cult. Uh, uh, of uh, the, the, They are victim of the criminal Muhammad. They are victims. They think we hate them. We don't. Because we are Christians. And we are here to save them and to bring them back to the to the Lord, to, the, to Christ himself. Christ, he came for the sick, not for the healthy. So we are not here to fight with Muslims. We are here to fight with lies. We are here to destroy the lies. Muslims are believers in lies. They are victims. We do not want to destroy them. We want to save them.
We don't want to fight with Muslims. We want to show them the truth. And the truth is always the truth. Nobody can change it and nobody can delete it and nobody can destroy it. The truth, my friend, will set you free. With Christ alone, truth will be with you always. As you see, Muhammad is nothing but fictions, versions, boys, river of wine, river of milk. This is not God. This is a pimp house. This is a bar. This is an open buffet. This is a messed up, noisy, garbage place. This is not a place where God can be. You see, in the presence of God, a silence or a noise will be which is going to present happiness, not a noise of madness and drinking. The noise can be praising the Lord. The noise can be worshipping the Lord. But the noise cannot be a bunch of a drunk people drinking non-stop and having sex. That is not the house of the Lord. The Messiah, our Lord, he flipped the tables of the Jews for just buying and selling in the courtyard of the temple. Muhammad, he taught his people that in the presence of Allah, in the house of Allah, they will be having sex non-stop and each one of them will have 70 years orgasm. A sexual maniac promise, perverted cult, the God of sex. So for us as a Christians, we are waiting for the holiness of Christ to come back. He was holy when he was here and he is holy when he come back and he is always holy wherever he is. With Allah, there's no holiness. I remember the Messiah, he said something very important. I want every Christian to make it as a guideline for his life. From their fruit, you shall know them, not from their names. If Muhammad was a person who is of God, then his fruit should be a fruit of God. But all of us, we knew that Muhammad, his fruit is evil, is ugly, is disgusting, and there's no God is there. From their fruit, my friend, not from their names. Muhammad, he changed his name to be the praised one because he wanted to be God. He wanted to replace Jesus, actually. He wanted to be the praised one. That's why he called himself the praised one. And that name alone telling you that he is the devil. For only devil will accept to be called the praised one. If you ask me, do you like to be called the praised one? I would say that is an insult to my God. I am not the praised one. How I can be? No prophet can be the praised one. That is a title should be given only to God. So how Muslim they call their prophet the praised one? They worship him. He took over. He is the devil. The devil, he come from your window, regardless of what kind of window it is. If your window is God, if your door is uh, religious, he will come to you from the door, religion. If your window is sex, he will come from the sex. He changed his format, he changed his uniform, he changed his name, he changed his look. But the fruit is always ugly, and so is Muhammad. God never promised us to be perverted. It is to be perverted to think about going to a place is the house of God and there's nothing there but sex with women you never met. Sex with women you never saw. Sex with women, they are made for sex. That is disgusting. If this is God, so what is pimp and what is Satan? The funny is that Muslim, when they make a movie and they try to present for you some Christians in the movie, they show the Christians are people who they are drunk, wearing naked clothes, etc. But in the same time, in the other side, they show you that when they go to heaven, they will be in the naked one. They will be the one having sex non-stop. And they will be the one drinking river of wine. See the contradiction? And not to forget, 
that Muslims on earth, they have unlimited number of sex too. And actually, we should make more videos of Shabir Ali, who said that Muslim men, they can have sex with more than four, if you remember. This is the video we showed just a few days ago. I still have it open here, actually. It says, question and answer, why did the Prophet Muhammad have more than four wives? And the answer of Shabir Ali was that there is nowhere in the Quran indicate that the Muslim man, he can have four women. We should talk about this one, should talk a special video about this topic so Muslims can be aware of how six maniac the promises of the one who made Quran. Disgusting. Thank you, God bless you, and see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Take care.